So in this video, I wanted to do a quick review of this high-end metal pencil sharpener from uh, Karanda Ash. This is called the Pencil Sharpening Machine. Uh, and basically it is a pretty fancy stationary pencil sharpener designed to sharpen wooden pencils as you'd expect. And it's from the Swiss company Karanda Ash. So uh, as you probably know, the company is known for, I would say nicer, stationary products and they have this pencil sharpener which is kind of uh i guess it's their flagship stationary pencil sharpener it's very heavy all metal you could see it is way way overbuilt in a, a really wonderful way and i don't mean overbuilt as a uh, complaint i mean overbuilt as in this thing it just feels absolutely bomb proof and it has a at least to me a really great looking kind of industrial aesthetic and when you pick it up it feels like like I guess it feels like the uh the build quality matches that aesthetic the thing has an eye-watering price tag if you look online you might see prices over $200 for this pencil sharpener if you go ahead and shop around the street price or the retail price that you'll find is usually expensive we're talking like 120 115 dollars but uh, it won't be the $220 you see at retail. And then if you shop around, you could find these very slightly used for under $100, depending on kind of where you live and, uh, you know, how patient you are. So uh, what's going on with this pencil sharpener? It is, you know, it is a standard pencil sharpener. It doesn't have any real surprises to it. It really just has that uh, Kron de Ash name and that wonderful build quality. So full metal exterior really quite solid on the front we see it has a uh, standard spring mechanism that this acts as a uh, a third hand or a second hand depending on how you hold it but uh, or how you consider it but basically this pulls out these jaws clamp on the pencil and the pressure here pulls it in that way you could turn it with this hand and stabilize the sharpener with this hand it does have a quite large metal retaining uh, clip, hook, whatever you want to call it. If you want to clamp it into your desk, you can see this thing is quite serious and you have a good four inches or so. So if you have a thicker desk, it's not a problem. Again, very industrial, very overbuilt. So it's nicely done. Branding and features are pretty light. Here's the hole for this also has it any on this uh, all four sides so you go in any direction it's very thoughtful uh, very little to see on the outside some you know some nice designs here just a little bit of extra style here's your drawer there's some shavings I've been working with this one for I've had this sharpener for a couple months now so uh, maybe six months or so so I definitely have been have been using it uh, very high quality shavings and it does a nice job with the sharpening we'll see that in a second drawer is fully metal again quite overbuilt not much to see inside but we see very little dust in there so almost all the shavings you know over 90 percent 95 percent are going in here so this is not a messy pencil sharpener here you can see the handle all metal some pieces are chromed mostly they're this uh kind of like a satin finish almost looks like it's titanium but it's not you could see you could take this thing apart if you want to rebuild it, but you don't need to open these screws up because this sharpening piece comes out, as we'll see. You might have noticed there's a little bit of knurling here. This is to adjust the sharpening stop. These different sharpeners, they have different ways to adjust the uh, how the pencil is sharpened. This one, uh, it will give you a full point or a it'll just stop it so you have a blunt point. It won't change the angle of the sharpener the way some of them will, but it will give you that blunter point. It'll just basically stop the very, very end from being sharpened. And you would just do that from by turning this knurled piece independent of this arm itself. Feature-wise, there's not too much else to see. It's a, it's a pretty simple device. And we'll get into that clamping mechanism here. You basically open this up, pull it out, it clamps down, it's holding the pencil now, and you turn it. It's 
it's one of those pencil sharpeners I could keep going. So you have to determine the stopping point for yourself. You see it's not really getting any sharper here. And if I open this up a little bit, I have this screw fully opened. You can see it still wants to go, but the tip, uh, it's not really any change. We'll, we'll, test that. we'll test that out later about the uh, blunt tip design. The uh, jaws definitely do damage your pencil. It has a strong spring here, and let's go right here in front of my finger. You can see it's clean. You can kind of hear it, right? There's a little crunch, and so right in front of my finger, we'll see the teeth marks there. Teeth marks, teeth marks, teeth marks. So if you want your pencil to stay in perfect shape as you're using it, maybe you have fancy pencils, maybe you just, uh, you know, you care about the presentation of your nice wooden pencils, then this sharpener is going to have some issues. You could see <laughs> the teeth are pretty aggressive looking. So this is not the pencil sharpener you want if you want to protect your pencil. You can even see there's a little bit of, probably just make it out on the bottom there, there is a little bit of, of uh, yellow paint from this pencil. So not the ideal sharpener for all pencils. You can uh, sharpen this. I don't know if you could sharpen it. You could rebuild this and you could take it apart if you want to get at the insides. You turn this piece just at, you know, I don't know, was that 20 degrees? pull this out and now you could look at the interior mechanism you want to be kind of careful here here this is like definitely a little sharp and it could pinch uh, and again you couldn't sharpen this piece but if you wanted to replace it you certainly could and you could see all the stuff in there and we'll see when you move this can we see what happens yes you could see this little piece right here it is going further in and out. It, it is just it is literally a piece of metal that is stopping the point of your pencil from going forward more. That's it. Or maybe it's pushing this piece back or, or something like that. But basically, it's going forward and back and it's stopping your pencil from progressing. It's hard to tell exactly what is stopping it. But that's essentially what's happening. Larger point inside, it's all very heavy metal, overbuilt. This stuff looks like it's going to last a century. So uh, just one of those nice things is you're paying a, a lot for this, but uh, it looks like it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. Putting it back, just kind of put it in, clip it. One, that's a real, <laughs> it's a really satisfying click. So, again, is it cheap? No, but it is wonderfully built. Got some dust all over the place. That's what happens when you take pencil sharpeners apart. So, nothing to worry about there. This opening is said to be good from 4 millimeter up to 10 millimeter pencils. So, that's a pretty large pencil. I have this thing. This is a Musgrave Cub, a 30301. I don't know if it's exactly... 10 millimeters, but it's definitely the largest pencil I could find in a pinch. And I'll put it in, and no problem getting in there. Could probably go a little bit larger. That one stopped as it should, really nice. And you have, that's a really wonderful point there for that pencil, so really nice. It doesn't have any concavity to it. Some nicer pencil sharpeners will go a little bit kind of inward, uh, which is aesthetically pleasing, but it's, it doesn't really help the sharpening. Anyway, so it's a nice long point. Not crazily long, but long enough. I'm going to turn this piece all the way in. Okay, it's all the way in now. You can see it's much shorter than it was. And I just have this pencil that broke recently. I will go... kind of stopped on its own there. That's good. Most of them will. And you could see that blunt tip. 
I don't know if that's exactly super useful all the time, but you do have a blunt tip. It's nicer when the pencil sharpener is actually changing the angle of the sharpening. So you have a more acute angle for a stronger point and a more oblique angle, a longer angle for a longer point. That would be preferable, but this mechanism is a lot simpler. So if you want that stronger angle, that stronger tip, it has the same angle. It just keeps it blunt at the end. It's kind of a simpler way to get at the same goal. I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I would say if you're curious about the Karan Daash pencil sharpening machine, I would say that it works well. It's amazingly built. It's really solid, really nice. I like the aesthetic. Uh, the price is quite high. So it's definitely not going to be the right pencil sharpener for everyone. Uh, it's just going to be overkill for a lot of people. But if you look for a deal, you could definitely find some deals out there and you get this thing for, you know, maybe $80, $90, $100 around there. Used, you could probably get it less. If you live in, you know, Germany, Switzerland, parts of France, you could probably get it for way less where it's more common in the U.S. Either uh, look for a deal or just kind of save up and you'll get a really nice pencil sharpener. That said, as we've seen on this, on this channel, there are the Car, Carl Engel or Angel, whatever it is, Carl Angel 5 and other great, great pencil sharpeners you can get for $23 or $24. I would generally recommend going with one of those unless you're really dying for a uh, kind of an heirloom piece or something that uh, matches a very specific aesthetic. But you can get really high quality pencil sharpeners that are going to last forever for about $24. And I tend to recommend them, even though uh, I myself keep keep buying these high-end pencil sharpeners and uh, really looking for that that perfect pencil sharpener. So I like this one a lot, but it doesn't add too much over the uh, cheaper ones, although it probably will outlast them by a pretty wide margin. Thanks for watching.